Okay, um, Louise, have we got any apologies for absence, please? Uh, yes, councillors William, Williams and Jackson and Amanda Russell. Okay. As per usual, I do need to ask if anyone's got any uh, declarations of interest to declare on the agenda we're about to discuss. Eddie, I haven't got an interest, but I think Louise just took the apologies. I've given mention to you, Eddie. I've got to apologise. I've got to leave at 7.30 to go to a, a county council related meeting. OK. Um, minutes of the previous meeting. I've just got a couple of comments to make on that. Um, Louise, are you able to give us an update on the feedback you got from signing those um, pledge statements? Have you got any uh, data on that? I haven't yet. Um... Anyway, just to update the committee, um, Louise has started to send out emails to um, probably best described as community leaders. Um, and that's uh, asking them to sign the pledge card that um, others have been signing, trying to keep the ball rolling with getting more people to uh, um, say yes to the, uh, the KCC consultation, consultation. So I'm just picking that up from minute 65. Um, the other thing I wanted to mention was uh, minute 71 about Love Lane. Um, I've got a contact at KCC, and by the sound of it, that is um, possible to have the speed limit reduced to 30 miles an hour. Um, I've got to speak to the officer again, because there will be a, um, a fee involved. So I'll have to come back to you with the cost, but it's likely to be, uh, she said 5,000 um, at the moment, because the traffic order is going to cost um, 2300 plus this, apparently there's other works that need to be done but um, i've only been speaking to her today on that so that's really just for your information is anyone yes uh, chris go ahead um thank you for that um i'm thinking this is not actually part of the 20s plenty as such as yet um and it would seem from what you just said that the kcc may be favorable to consider an application for reduction 40 down to 30 as an initial like phase a whatever as a separate project in itself which leads me to think we ought to be looking for funding if possible support from other councillors etc perhaps yeah, there's definitely definitely that option um and then just to recall that at the finance meeting um last month we moved over some uh, highways funding into the 20s plenty budget. So uh, at the time we might, if it seems appropriate, if we can't get funding from other sources, might consider using that. I'm hoping it won't come to the full 5,000, but I need to speak to her because it may be we can use the services of um, John McQueen, Phil Jones Associates to uh, drop whatever is necessary rather than leaving that uh, uh, to um, KCC. Okay, uh, Councillor Anthony. Eddie, and as you know, um, Ben, Jay and I are talking to Sarah Elcock, who's the same officer, and she's the new Paul Brand, for everyone else who remembers Paul Brand, the schemes manager. We're talking to her about Ashford Road, and she was fairly positive about that, wants to do a speed survey uh, and so on. But if, if we end up doing them both at the same time, they may be able to go on the traffic order together, and that will be £2,000 once rather than £2,000 twice. So nope. two for the price of one. That sounds good. So Quite we'll good. Uh, we won't progress on either until uh, we've got them both um, hopefully working together. Uh, mm -hmm. Tim, go ahead. Thanks, Eddie. Um, I, yeah, I'm glad you've raised this because I wanted to mention that I think it was this meeting that a number of us made the point that we felt Love Lane should be 20, not 30. And I just wanted to ask a question and make a point. The question I want to ask is, have we actually raised with KCC the possibility of Love Lane being 20 miles an hour um, or not. I'd be grateful for a response on that because uh, rather than just assume they're not going to consider 20, I'd like to know whether we've actually asked for that. 
if if we are only going to look at reducing to 30, then I, I support what Anthony's saying about including the Ashford Road, by the way, which should also be 20. Um, but if we're not going to consider 20 for either or both of these, I don't think this meeting is the place to talk about this, because I don't think the 20s plenty campaign is interested in, in streets being set at a speed limit that cannot be justified in terms of any kind of road safety st uh, statistics. Um, and I just want to make that point. I'd be grateful if the minutes could record it. Yeah, no, I might certainly ask the question, Tim. Um, I think the reason it cropped up um, was, as you'll see further on, um, consideration was being made as to uh, where the uh, eastern gateway, i.e. the Whitstable Road gateway, is located. So it does require more thought and consideration before any specific um, decisions are made. Um, <coughs> my comment was just really to uh, answer uh, Chris Oswald Jones's comment from the, um, from the last set of, set of minutes. But all noted, thank you. Um, okay, any, anyone else anything on the minutes? Otherwise, I'm going to propose that we accept the minutes. And if someone could just second that for me. Second. Thank you. And so the, all the councillors agree that those are the uh, approved minutes. Good. Yep. So moving on to um, item four, um, the local cycling and walking infrastructure proposal. I'm going to ask um, Julian to talk us through that. Thank you, uh, Eddie. Um, I think everyone here knows what a, roughly what an LC WIP is. Um, the reason, I mean, the reason this is on the agenda of this committee um, is that um, when the town council met on Monday, it agreed that it wanted to develop an LC WIP, uh, and that uh, the Twenties Plenty Committee should take responsibility for it. Um, the other um, developments, which I think most people are aware of, are that um, uh, SBC has agreed to give us the funding that we would need to put together an LC WIP. <coughs> and finally, uh, Phil Jones Associates, who we've been working with on the scheme, 20 mile an hour scheme, have given us an initial proposal um, for, for an LC WIP. Um, since the paper came out. Uh, me and Eddie had a meeting with SBC uh, this morning with Emma Wiggins and uh, James Freeman, the head of planning, and they're quite happy for us to take the lead on developing uh, an LC uh, WIP. And they also agreed that um, we could get uh, officer uh, support uh, from them uh, for that. Um, and so I've had a kind of memory lapse. <laughs> Who's been helping us so far? Nat Natalie. Natalie, sorry. Yes. Uh, yeah. So Nat Nat um, Natalie is going to, uh, is going to be available to uh, to help us uh, with it. So um, that's where we are. Um, and I think the next the next stage will be for um, a sub committee of this a subgroup of this committee. Um, to look at uh, re specking the, the, what we want from Phil Jones in, in detail. Um, the proposal you've got at the bottom here is um, that the current informal discussion group that's been meeting for several months, which includes me, Eddie, uh, Chris Barker, um, Tim, uh, Chris Wright from the Future Forum, and Alistair Gould, who's the uh, deputy cabinet member for planning at Swale, plus Natalie, that that um, group, assuming those people are happy still to be involved, that that group becomes um, the, uh, uh, the kind of subcommittee uh, or the subgroup of the committee that's um, taking the lead in overseeing the plan. So yeah, that's the, that's the kind of proposal on this, but I'm very happy to answer any questions that people have got. Uh, go ahead, Chris Parker. Thank you, and thank you, Julian. Um, <coughs> I'm assuming we we'll be using informal names here. I don't, I don't call you Councillor Saunders, but happy, happy to do so if you want me to. 
Um, so firstly, I mean, I, you know, having sat on the council, I think this is the right place to do it. And I'm hoping that everyone agrees that I think the 2020 committee is, is about safe and, you know, viable transport rather than just a, a mile an hour token for cars, I think. And so active transport fits within that. Um, my thought and question, Eddie, is, and I don't know, I don't mean to, um, sorry, Julian, I don't mean to be unhelpful for here, but just genuinely don't know the answer, is, is does the local cycling and walking infrastructure plan have to sit within our parish, or could we formulate it in the context of, you know, the wider community, or do we have to engage any other parishes in that? if we are going to extend it into, you know, the, the parish interconnecting routes and so on. Um, we, don't, we don't need to answer that now. And, 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 and even if it does require sort of further engagement with other groups, I'm, I'm comfortable and confident that it's the right place to sit here. But I guess that kind of scope and jurisdiction, I think I'm just interested in the long term. Okay, I can, I think, I think, um... The plan, it would be good if the plan wasn't bounded by parish boundaries. We, we me and Eddie discussed this a bit with, with Swale. Um, they said they, they would be happy to help us um, if there were any difficulties in engaging uh, other parishes. I mean, I think in a way it's about how we approach other parishes because, you know, if what we're actually proposing to them is that they can get a bit of free um consultancy support to develop cycling and walking in their in their areas so i think if we can get off on the right foot with them i would hope it wasn't problematic but we you're right we need to you know we need to explore it and it's one of the things we need to to uh, to get clear yeah go ahead tim thanks eddie um i mean i, I hear what chris says and i i think there's a lot there's a lot, if not everything, to be said for maximum efficiency and minimum duplication of meetings about the same issues. But it's not yet obvious to me that the 2020 committee is the right host for the LC WIP. Um, and I just think some there needs to be some thinking about the geographic coverage and the degree to which the 20s plenty geographic coverage is consistent with the LC WIP. The LC WIP, I expect, is going to include, it's going to have to include the A2, and the 20s Plenty scheme doesn't include the A2. We've talked about opportunities like the Abbey School crossing before uh, in various meetings, but in the 20s Plenty Committee, we haven't because it's not within our uh, remit. Um, and I think if we wanted it to be, then I think we need to to reconsider what that means in terms of lobbying for the A2 to become a 20 mile an hour limit. It, it raises issues. Um, the other one I would just put on the table is the neighborhood plan. Neighborhood plan is a more obvious place to uh, locate the LC WIP because of its broader geographic footprint than the 20s plenty. Um, the group of people that have been named as being part of the um, LC WIP group, of which which I'm named, um, came together as a very informal group meeting earlier last year to talk about walking and cycling generally. And the fact that it's being formalised, I think, is a very positive thing. The fact that we're voting through, uh, or the, the uh, councils are voting through funding, terrific, absolutely brilliant. But I just don't want to immediately assume it's the role of the 20s Plenty Committee uh, to oversee the LC WIP, or maybe I've misunderstood something. Okay. Shall, I, shall I respond? Go ahead, Sergio. Yeah. Um, I think um, having a kind of putting the, the group that we've had running for a while, uh, Tim, form, formalizing it and having it report to. Um, this group is it's not that we we want to to have the same boundaries or that we we think they're the same projects it's 
it's in a way for the town council uh, a slightly kind of contingent approach because I think um, the people on the, the neighbourhood plan committee just felt man managing a project like this um, was not something they'd got the capacity to do where I guess um, the 20s plenty committee has now got experience of, of managing quite a significant project um, and managing a, a relationship with with Phil Jones associates so there's a kind of contingent um, logic in having the you know that the group that we've already got in place having it for a kind of convenience sake re uh, purpose report into this committee rather than uh, the neighborhood plan steering group I, i'm sure chris can uh, come in okay. chris so, so yeah I, th I think to enlarge on that a little um it's not just a capacity issue although capacity is definitely a consideration it's really a timing issue um, the neighborhood plan we wish to get into a draft state for Faversham's consultation um, by May in effect and it, it's felt that we would like to get that ready in May so that we can ultimately go for a consultation, the Regulation 16, I think it is, um, uh, in, in, in and around September, that it could then go to kind of independent examination and so on. Um, so that, that next year, um, in the early part of next year, we can get a referendum. Um, the conversations with Urban Vision have suggested that it isn't possible in a neighbourhood plan to leave hooks for subsequent documentation and as a consequence the LC WIP will have to be a standalone document. I mean we we hope that there are some elements um, that we can include in um, in the design code perhaps and in um, in the ambition of you know interconnects of routes and so on in the neighbourhood plan but we, we will we will not be able to support and wait for the completion of an LC WIP. And as a consequence, we don't wish to hold up the neighbourhood plan contingent on the LC WIP. It's <coughs> that we, as we have been speaking to developers of the various sites in Faversham, ensure that they have something to work with sooner rather than later, why we want the neighbourhood plan finished. And so the neighbourhood plan, and, and the neighbourhood plan obviously has a jurisdiction of the exact four parishes as they exist today, and that the LC might extend beyond that, but, but that notwithstanding, and that isn't really known right at this point, it's a timing issue as much as anything else. And I don't really want to, we don't want to, as a committee in the Labour plan, you know, hold that up on the basis of the LC whip. We really recognise the beauty and the value of one. It's just we want to get the LC whip out, so the neighbour plan out, so that it can it can help the developers for the neighbour for their development. Sorry. Uh, did you want to come in, Anthony? Did you say? Um, just a brief thought. Um, if there's sort of broad agreement about who's going to be on the LC WIP group, th there's there's three options. There's do it through the Twenties Plenty Committee, um, which the Town Council talks about. Uh, but I hear Tim's point about about that, um, or the name of a plan. But there's the issues that Chris has identified. The third option is that group of people could form a separate group that reports directly to the town council if you wanted to separate it from 20s plenty i mean i've, I've no strong feelings either either way uh, chris oswald jones uh, <clears throat> thank you chair um i concur with tim's first two points um and then just going on just to bear in mind that neighborhood plan has fixed ward boundaries and doesn't drift into other parishes um i think we need to liaise with other parishes around us um, on this topic. And initially that would be obviously Ospringe, Bolton, Graveney, Norton and Buckland. We have cycle route one, national cycle route one, and then on to Shelbridge selling and others. So there needs to be a liaison separate to the Swales area East committee. We have the Faversham and district engagement forum which we're hoping um, parishes will come on board and take a lead here. 
Um, so it is, it's liaison with different groups. Um, I like the idea of considering what um, Anthony has just mentioned about there being a separate um, group reporting to the town council rather than going, I don't know whether it's necessary to go through either 20s committee or elsewhere. It's something that needs to be thought about quite carefully. Um, and I raised the point um, that I mentioned in my email, LC WIP, we know what it means, but the public don't when it goes up on public notices agenda and when we broaden out our debate. Thank you, Chris. Uh, Tim. Yeah, thanks. If I uh, could just come back briefly and thanks for those responses, um, Chris and Anthony, and the clarifications that you've offered. And I think it's, yeah, it's the, it's the pragmatism um, which needs to prevail. I, I've got a fourth suggestion to your three, Anthony, which is that um, the Twenties Plenty Committee becomes the Walking and Cycling Committee uh, and broadens its remit in order to be able to accommodate the LC WIP, um, sees the Twenties Plenty project as its flagship, if I could use a nautical expression, um, but extends now in order to be able to use its experience in the ways that have been described um, and in order to uh, avoid the risks for, to the neighborhood plan that, that Chris described. But I've got a second thought as well, which is that, you know, we've got a really helpful table that I think Adrian's put together of all the projects in and their priorities that have been looked at really carefully. Um, that is itself a draft LC whip is my uh, suggestion. We're actually close to draft one. It won't be what we will get after the eventual involvement of, of uh, Phil Jones, if that's the decision to go with Phil, but um, it's draft one. And I, I've said this before, I, I, an LC whip is a list of schemes we've got a list of schemes, we've got an LC whip, we just need to put the title across the top. And I'm really just following guidance that Phil has given me in the past before, um, or possibly even you, Adrian, have given me before. Call it an LC whip, but it's an LC whip. There isn't a particular formula that, that you need to follow. And that, to the maybe, Chris, to the benefit of the neighbourhood plan, in the sense that there might be at least an outline LC whip, a draft, a, a framework, that the neighbourhood plan could reference uh, while the further development of the LC whip takes place. Shall I, do you want me to come back in? Yeah, if, yes, Julian. Yeah, I, I suppose there's a, there's a number of things here. Um, I, because, we're, I, I mean, I don't disagree with some of the comments uh, that are being made. I mean, the, the, on a certain level, you could argue that reporting direct to the town council would make things less bureaucratic, but then the town council would have to um, spend time, you know, discussing um, a very specific activity. I, I would tend to, I think most of us would probably agree with you, Tim, that at some stage we need to change the name of committees and possibly you know, merge or change what what particular committees are doing. Um, with I mean, I think we're we're a bureaucratic, necessarily a bureaucratic organisation. So I don't think we can just you know agree to to do that. We'd have to go through the the, um, the process. So in the short term, I think the key thing is that the group we've got starts to 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 meet um, whether whether it's reporting to this committee or, or whether it's reporting direct to the to the town council and I, I suspect Louise might tell us that if we want to because we agreed in a motion at the town council for this group to look after it I don't know whether we can easily just kind of change that decision um I, I suppose so yes with justification if if that's the recommendation you want to take back to the town council. Okay, thank you all for your contributions there. I'm going to suggest, uh, Julian, that um, 
the, 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 the walking and cycling group, as it has been, picks it up at their meeting next week. I believe we got one next Wednesday. Yeah, um, that's right. So we might want to take the discussion further then um, and agree who's um, who we want to do the work. Because I believe my understanding from Swale is it's down to us now to uh, commission someone to, to go ahead with this. Uh, and that might be something the group can talk about um, on Wednesday. Yeah, I think prior to that, we should perhaps also take some advice from Louise about tendering sure. processes and so on, make sure we're okay. There. Yep, uh, Chris Barker here. Oops. Okay, Chris. Oh, you your mic off, Chris. You're on mute. Apologies, given that I spent all my life on um, these sorts of calls, you'd think I would get, get good at it by now. Um, I, if I'm on the cycling and walking group on Wednesday, I don't have an invite for it. So if anyone could forward it to me, that would be really helpful. Um, I need to make sure I avoid crashes at work, which would be useful. And um, Julian, Councillor Saunders, I, I think I've um, said before that Urban Vision, if we do need to do a second tender thing for, for it, um, over the vision if we have to look to offer us a tender as well if we need to do competitive sort of analysis. Okay, just thank you all. Um, I'm going to move on to um, item five of the agenda now. Um, I think most of you are probably aware um, that um, the prelude to that uh, excellent table that Adrian has put together came from meetings um, that have been had over the past uh, few weeks to clarify um, making sure KCC um, were on board and um, making sure we'd spoken to Phil Jones or John, John McQueen. Um, so looking down there, where are we? Sorry about that, bits of paper everywhere. Um, so we, the first meeting, it was important, the one with, uh, with Tim, uh, uh, along with John, it was important to make sure we were tackling the issues raised on commonplace. Um, and it was Tim particularly stressed, um, which I thought was important, to prioritise the interventions that uh, Phil had already outlined on his initial uh, uh, drawings. Um, so really, I really want to move straight onto the table because um, you've got the document that I send out in front of you. And I'll ask Adrian to take us through uh, the table and how we've come to the details on that table. Thank you, Adrian. Right, I can unmute myself at the same time. <laughs> uh, good grief. Um, so uh, there was... Uh, I think that it's important that we, we distinguish between, as we've sort of been discussing now, um, between those things which are longer term and part of, will probably form part of the LC WIP, um, and those things which can be done uh, shorter term, which are primarily designed to gain compliance with, with 20 miles an hour, and, and will also feed into the LC WIP as well. So there's, I, I guess you know, the, the, the short term measures Form, uh, form two functions. Um, and what I've tried to do on this spreadsheet, if um, just to try and explain some of the colouring and the, and, and, the, and the emboldening and so on, is that where we've where I've got things in bold, um, such as in cell F5 and, and I5, that indicates something which could be done pretty soon. Um, to enhance the 20 miles an hour uh, um, <clears throat> scheme as it is. Uh, something like, which is in orange, um, uh, such as on F7, or sorry, F8, um, those are things which uh, need to be done and probably would actually, some of them would help the, uh, the, the 20 mile an hour scheme as well, but may have to be deferred for, for later. Um, I've tried to give some indication of phasing on the right hand side. Um, phase one being what we already have, um, and then phase two is, is what is what is immediately coming next. 
Um, and I have categorized them according to the intervention type. Um, you might feel it's more helpful to categorize them according to uh, the location. We can discuss whether that's, you know, which is the better present, which is the better presentation, which is more helpful. Um, I predominantly uh, try to categorize it into um, uh, a number of uh, about five or six, I think. Um, we've talked about East Enhanced Gateways, it's been one intervention. Um, we've talked about a crosstown walking route, which although that is more part of, uh, of probably an LC whip than 20 miles an hour per se, it clearly does help 20 miles an hour in certain places. Um, we've also considered healthy streets. This is not something which was originally um, part of the, uh, of the um, 2020 remit, but is would help would help enforce the uh, would help gain compliance with the 20 miles an hour, as well as being hugely beneficial for um, cycling and walking. Uh, pedestrian crossings, a bit of a mixture of things which were already proposed and other things which have, have come along uh, during the uh, discussion. Um, and uh, cycle lanes, the, the cycle lanes is probably the weakest bit of this because um, th there may well need to be more cycle lanes or, so uh, let me put it another way, there may well need to be more provision for cycle lane, for, for cycling elsewhere, whether it's a cycle lane as such or, a, or simply protected um, you know, or a low traffic neighbourhood. Uh, to be discussed. And then there's a there's a number of other uh, interventions down at the bottom, uh, categorised as other, I've almost managed to get on one page, not quite, um, where, where, where further interventions are needed of, of different sorts. Um, do you want me to go any further or, or have you seen them all? Do you want to just, do we just want to have a discussion or a question and answer session? I've got a question, which, sorry, Chair, I should have, <laughs> go, 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 go ahead. Um, and I, hopefully I'm not going to be too contentious here, um, and I'm not trying to be contentious actually at all. Um, I, I think at the last meeting, and I think what we're going to discuss next is, is the, the cost estimates that Phil Jones Associates is going to produce should we kind of accept their proposals tonight for a number of these elements? My question is, to what extent is whatever we deliver in whatever phasing determined by any budgets we can get hold of and or prepared to raise as sort of finance and public works loans versus, you know, this is the outcome we absolutely have to achieve cost is you know because what what I'm what I struggle with in any kind of phasing at the moment is it's it's phasing in ambition or it's phasing relating to who's going to deliver it or what it's set against rather than phasing in a context of, of, of time or money or both and, and I, I sort of the project and product manager within me finds it hard to extricate the cost and time of anything versus, you know, meaningful benefit. I, you know, and and, and, I, and I, I just I struggle with the phasing a bit. Eddie, do you want to talk about the budgets? Because you're you're more a favour with the with the budgets than I am. I mean, just only to say that that's actually a key driver here, Chris, um, as to what what money is available now to do something. And that's really where the, the, the emboldened items are, are items which, which we think, I, I, from my understanding of, of, the, of your budgets, um, are, are um, doable now. Okay. I, I think, but, but Eddie, Eddie or Julian should, should talk about that maybe better. The, the items that uh, have been marked as phase two, for sake of a better word, are the ones which um, uh, Phil Jones or John McQueen had advised us uh, would give the greater benefit to um, self-enforcing the 20 mile an hour limit uh, across the town. Uh, the rest of it is really uh, pretty rough and a bit of a guesstimate at the moment. Uh, it was simply to give a bit of an idea, but none of it is fixed in tone. It says new phasing, but I would call it draft phasing. Tim, uh, come in, please. Thanks, Eddie. Um, yeah, I think to Chris's point, 
um, I, I think we can give partial reassurance. Um, the partial reassurance being that in the conversations that happened, it, uh, at least that I was part of, um, that led to the prioritization in this table, one of the issues that we discussed was affordability. What were the low cost short term interventions? I think we were working on the assumption that there wasn't a lot of cash at the moment and that the more extensive or more extensive works um, would need to be pushed back in order to generate that funding from other sources. However, and I think this is the other part, um, the appointment of Phil Jones Associates to undertake the costing work that includes many of the elements on this table will nail that one way or the other. Center line, road center line removals, we've always understood to be low cost and reasonably high impact in terms of their crosstown and they do transform the street, but they just involve quite low cost works. That's why they've been prioritized. So I, I think we've got a good basis here, but if we do get the appointment of Phil uh, going forward, which I support, then we'll be able to further develop this. I have some other comments, Eddie, I want to make, but I'll, I'll wait until we've dealt with Chris's before I, um, I come back, if that's all right. Yes, that's fine, Tim. Yeah, go ahead, Chris. Um, thank you, Chair. Um, I was going to suggest um, asking Tim for his experience um, bearing in mind about what five years ago at least um, similar sort of thing with the station road regeneration we had a, an immense amount of work done to be foiled by um, I think funding was the bottom line um, this chart um, sheets that um, Adrian has been talking to um, sets out aspirations budget phasing I think it's brilliant as is. Uh, Julian, go ahead. Yeah, I think to go back to the other bit of Chris Barker's question about the, the finance, I mean, we, we have a budget for next year. We have uh, a bit of money um, carrying forward from this year. Case, I mean, KCC have made some financial commitments for next year. And if you think about the phasing of work, it's, it's only just over 12 months until we're into the following financial year. So I think there is a, a kind of, there is a bit of a war chest now to uh, spend on um, these, uh, these plans that are being developed. But the other thing of course is the more we develop the plans, the easier it will be if, if kind of sources of funding come along um, to put in applications for that. So I, I think the, the logic of this is, is strong and it, it's supported by our financial situation. I, and I, in a way, hope that we don't have to consider getting a public uh, works loan, but in the end, it, it could be uh, a possibility for us. Harvey, thank you, Julian. Um, okay, um, what, what, do you wanna come in now, Tim? It's, it's okay, yeah, come in. Thanks, Eddie. Um, yeah, there, there were, two points I wanted to make on the table. Um, the first relates to the Stonebridge crossing that um, is mentioned elsewhere in the Phil Jones proposal. I don't see that directly listed here. Is that the Davington Hill Dark Hill uh, item 16? Yes. Um, it is, it, okay. It is that one, yeah. That's great. Um, the next, actually there's two more. The next one is under number 14, the Mal Forbes Road. Um, it says point one, confirm whether the crossing is now acceptable. If so, dot, dot, dot. If so, then develop the details, I presume is that uh, the next line then kicks in. Um, and I just wanted to, I wondered why that was not green uh, and why it's being held back as an orange. Um, and then maybe I'll just give my last point so that um, they could be, Adrian might respond to all of them. Um, there's a general opportunity throughout Faversham that isn't listed here that I did mention and I've mentioned many times before, which is around junction tightening. And, and that's around taking out the generous curves 
that allow people to turn corners very quickly in vehicles. Um, and if you want to see an example of what I'm talking about, it's the kind of intervention as you drive past the station, turn left onto Newton Road, you'll see that there are some granite sets which allow larger vehicles to make a more generous curve, but they give a visual indication to most vehicles that you should follow a tighter turning radius. Um, and I just wondered why they're not on the list. And I'd recommend they, they should be on the list, not least because they could be done with paint. Uh, they could be done with planters. They could be do done with low cost interventions, not, not always with the granite sets, which are a bit more expensive. Thank you. Thank you, Tim. Um, with regard to the uh, the station road Newton Road one, um, my thought on that was it's coming under the Crosstown walking route. Um, I think if I remember right, and Adrian could help me with this, I think we said when we were talking to John that we wanted Newton Road done at the same time as the Crosstown walking route. Is Sorry, Eddie, I've confused you. I unintentionally have confused oh. you. I wasn't referring to that cross town walking route. I was refer I was trying to give you an example of what I mean by tightening a radius. It's there's already one in place. You know, the roundabout as at the intersection of Newton Road and yes. Station Road. The the corner there already has granite sets, which have been put in to give the visual impression to most vehicles that there's a tight turning mm. radius but actually they allow a generous turning radius for the large vehicles that need to negotiate the left turn. Oh, that was a Newton. positive example. It, it's a positive example. Ah, right. Sorry, because yeah. Newton Road comes up later. Yeah. Um, but it understand. could be done throughout Faversham. Yeah. And there could be other interventions other than granite sets, lower cost interventions like planters, or even a painted line, which I'm not mm. the greatest fan of, but the right kind of paint can also do a short term, low cost intervention. We have broad, wide sweeps at so many of the jun junctions in Faversham that just encourage fast driving. Yeah, no, t totally agree there, Tim. And um, under the lower road um, improvements, that could be something that it could be considered, i.e. putting the planters out and painting the curb line like, like you were suggesting. Um, Adrian, I think you were indicating yeah, um, so yes, Tim, you're right um, that the, 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 all of the all the junction type, which I think a lot of them were on on um, Phil Jones's original plans, actually we haven't got here, which we probably should. Um, there is one here um, which, which might be um, the Forbes Road Athelstan Road junction, where there's a, there's an implicate there's a it's not explicit here, but it's implied that if we were going to do something on the pedestrian crossing there we could well do something um, uh, around the junction on, on Athelstan Road. Um, the reason for the Mal Forbes Road crossing um, acceptance, yes or no, and when, is that um, depending on what happens at the top of uh, the Mal on a, on a crossing there, it might change the pedestrian flows from, from the west to the east, or do I mean the other way around? Um, uh, and, and it, sorry, north south. Yeah, no, no, sorry, but I mean it from the eastern side of the road to the to the western side, or could, sorry, it could be the other way around. Um, so I think we want to have a look. Once the A two five one is done and the um, and the and the crossing is installed at the top of the mall, if that's done, um, if if that's accepted, that might have implications for the pedestrian flows on that on that part of the mall. That was that was the only reason for, for not doing that as part of phase two, but it could well be phase three. Eddie, if I could just come back on that yeah, specific yeah, point. Ahead, I, I, I would have raised it later, but I'm pretty convinced that there will not be an impact on pedestrian flows. And I'm actually very concerned, and I was going to raise this later, that an informal crossing adjacent to the A2 is actually a highly risky thing for us to be considering. And I really want, I wanted to ask where this idea has come from, because um, I don't think it will alter significantly or even moderately the running across the road of students to the Abbey School and other local residents that's currently occurring at the Forbes Road, road location. By all means, I would have one 
if Forbes Road were in place, but I, it would be part of many other informal crossings or, or possibly even formal crossings next to a busy road like the A2, where there are so many vehicle turning movements, the idea of an informal crossing fills me with fear. And I, I just want that sort of noted today because I, I, I really think this is a huge risk that we may be inadvertently getting ourselves into. I mean, John, uh, Adrian can correct me, but I'm sure the idea came from John McQueen. Yes. So we were waiting to see what his designs would be. Chris Oswald Jones. Um, I'll back up what Tim was saying. It's a highly dangerous, in my opinion, to, cr to encourage um, the running across of two streams of traffic up by the horse trough. People coming from um, parallel crossing from uh, like Kings North Road along the A2, the horse trough and on onwards along the A2. Highly dangerous. Um, it's a totally separate um, existing crossing where kids particularly do run across those two lanes of traffic. Um, that should be looked at separately from the Mole Forbes Road possible tabled, table junction concept that has been mooted um, following the previous fiasco at the Mole. May I, while speaking, pick up on um, item 16. Can I, may I propose that we alter the terminology from Dabington Hill stroke Dark Hill to read Dabington Hill Stonebridge Pond area on the pedestrian crossings, item 16. Thank you. Thank you, Chris. Okay, and, and all I would say is nothing is off the table, as you can see from the list there, and I wouldn't get too hung up on the uh, the phasing at the moment, because that's all all up for grabs is probably the best way to phrase it. Okay, so moving on to look at the document that we had from John McQueen, basically giving us a rough idea of um, costings for him to draw up um, designs, a cost estimate um, for us. We have, I mean, we can afford a fair number of these. Obviously, the uh, uh, initial record priority is the center line removal, as you see from the top of the list there, um, followed by the relocation of the Bisingwood Road gateway, um, asking John, John McQueen to go ahead with his designs for the Mal A2 junction, and then uh, we can see what he comes up with and uh, uh, see uh, what his advice and uh, KCC's thoughts are on what what is possible there. Um, then we got the Crosstown walking routes. Um, I think <clears throat> myself, and I don't know what Julian thought about this. Um, asking um, John McQueen to progress all four concept designs on the crossings, which is all four of the ones that are listed, um, and asking him to draw up uh, the revised concept designs for Lower Road, which my recollection was that we were going to have raised um, informal crossing points at Lower Road um, it could have been elsewhere, but uh, that one in particular was one of the main changes to the lower road uh, designs. The other one that's come out first on the report for some reason, although it was one of the last things we discussed with John and Jamie, uh, was all road. Um, what well, the discussion there started on all road because um, I wanted to get a costing of what the interventions would be on all road so I could approach Andersons again to see what money I can get out of them. Um, talking with John and Jamie at that point, our discussion sort of drifted down Priory Row and talked about Barnfield Road um, Junction there. Um, and also a bit further down because we ended up talking about cycling as well, um, the uh, other narrow alleyway by the shop down the end there. So that is what John is talking about along there. He's also included um, the Barnfield Road Junction, which I'm sure Chris is fully aware of. It's a 
an area um, where Bar uh, not Barnfield Road, sorry, Bramble Hill Road meets Reedland Crescent, um, which is a ridiculous layout. Something obviously has happened in the past, and that would fit in with what Tim was mentioning earlier about getting rid of these long sweeping uh, corners. Um, I've, I want to read something out. It was an email that John sent me. I had asked him about this um, proposal project for the All Road, um, Priory Row, uh, the Barnfield Road, and that quote he's given there for 5,000. And I, I wanted to ask, or I asked him if there are any aspects of the proposal that would be better served under the LC Whip proposal. Um, he replied saying there would be some overlap. However, it wouldn't be as much as the LC Whip would provide the evidence strategy with design recommendations and high level costs rather than the design schemes, which would be costed for measured quantities. Um, the LC Whip, if they prepare an LC Whip uh, for us, um, it would include the low traffic neighborhood cell identifications for the whole town and, and will include a set of low traffic neighborhood design principles. However, it would not include the design of each neighborhood. Going back to the Priory Road or Priory Row um, uh, um, issue, he said that there isn't a lot to save there. We could possibly save uh, 1,250. Um, but he doesn't think there's a lot of an overlap on that. So it was just, I thought, if, there, if there's any money to save out of the 5,000 by not doing it because we're having an LC whip, then that might be uh, an opportunity. Um, and I'm just going to come back to you because I can't see anyone at the moment. Right, I'm back in the room again. Um, it's just, uh, from my mind, I was trying to uh, unravel and get my head around what we want to do uh, with regard to uh, All Road and Priory Row, or even if we want to do anything at the moment at all. Has anyone got any comments, thoughts, or observations on that? Because as you can see, um, the cost has been quoted at 5,000, which excludes VAT, uh, and also would exclude mapping or OS licenses. So it will cost a little bit more than 5,000. Yes, Chris or Jones, go ahead. I think, thank you, Chair. I think we need to be clear. Um, there's a junction, very narrow access for, I think it's still called Barnfield Road, junction straight off of the 40, feet, 40 Thieves, the Priory Road, that narrow one where traffic has to give way to anyone coming the other way, up by the playground, Barnfield. So that's one topic in itself, that area, the junction, Barnfield itself, and the turning around Barnfield, with the play area, that's one area. Um, going down past Dabington School to the new car park area and so on, that's all covered, that area is covered with the, get it right, Puffin Crossing um, in the Anderson's work. So I'm not sure of plans in that particular area. Going forward, uh, the road's been modified in width up to quite a, sh quite a sharp, um, someone else said it's not a, not a blind bend. I say it is the right hand bend, um, <clears throat> taking you to the narrower portion of all road up towards, um, oh, I've got the housing estate with the traffic lights access junction down there. Um, so there's, there's three areas really. We need to be clear which we're talking about. Quite right, Chris. Uh, <laughs> I, I got a bit more information from uh, John McQueen um, and he's broken it down for us a little bit more. Uh, he believes that if we went ahead with his all road traffic scheming that he uh, would draw up in more detail, that would be the speed cushions that were on the original drawings and removing the center line. If we did that, he reckons it would cost, and this is actually doing it, um, about 26K if we wanted to improve the Bonfield Road um, junction with Priory Row, uh, that Chris just talked about, um, he thinks that would, to implement 
the, the drawings he would come up with, that would cost us about 32K in his estimations. But what he's also looking at, and I, I don't fully understand this, um, I can share it on my screen if need be, and it might be something that Tim can make more, more sense of than what I got. Uh, uh, what I got on it, and this only came through this morning. Um, oh, you got it. Well done, Adrian. There no we go. <laughs> uh, Chair, excuse buffing in, but I'm not sure if Tim's still with us. He's gone off the side panel. Oh, he's, no, he's, he's here. He's still there. Oh, right. Okay. He's just, if you press the down arrow. I'm here. To... I'm here, Chris. Thank you. I mean, I asked John for a bit more information because he was quoting 5,000, and I, I wasn't 100% sure what we were, we, we were paying for. So he's broken it down a little bit more to, to help us out. And these are the, these are illustrative costings? Yeah, I wanted to get, again, it's to help me with Anderson's. Yep. I asked John to provide me some costs of what it would take to fully implement what John was going to design. So, so it sounds like he's done the costings for free and he has, he's yet to design them. That's right, yes. Which, which is an interesting, I mean, you know, and uh, I, I, I take I, it with a pinch of salt. Yeah. I wouldn't hold him to it, but it's, it's you know, he knows what he's doing. So um, it's just ballpark, Tim. Yeah. So there's what? There's 200,000 pounds worth. It, I can't see the bottom right hand figure. Is that 32 or 82? Uh, 32. 30. 50, 100. There's 130, 140,000 pounds worth of work. That might be a hundred. It might be two hundred. It, it'll. It's that order of cost that allows you to speak to Andersons to say it's going to be there or thereabouts, and um, we're going to produce some designs for you. Okay. Uh, yeah, that's what he's done. I mean, I guess the question I've got for, uh, for, for us this evening is: Do we want to get these drawings drawn up so we've got them um, in reserve? So as of when we've got the money to do them, if Anderson's provide uh, all or part of it, or, or not. Um, and that goes the same with everything uh, this evening, really. We've got the list of things from John, of his costings. Um, so it's really for us to decide which ones we want to go ahead with and ask John to start drawing these things up. He has said that um, the time limit, the times he's done on it, um, uh, are concurrent, a lot of it would overlap. However, it's unlikely, other than the centre line, it's unlikely we'd make quick move ahead with it. Yeah, go ahead, Tim. Thanks, Eddie. Um, I think with Andersons, I wouldn't commission Phil Jones to do anything right now. I'd, I'd, I'd commission them to do other things, but I'd take what they've done to Andersons and get Andersons to pay the 5,000 to do the design work, as well as, you know, what's, if you're spending 150, you might as well ask them to spend 155, save five, uh, redeploy it for some other items on this list that we might not otherwise have been able to afford. And this isn't, I mean, I'm sure John and Phil would understand this, um, so long as they get something else out of this by way of a commission. I don't think it's an un uh, an immoral or unethical act on our part to say, well, actually, thank you very much. We'll, uh, we'll take that away. Um, I'd like to come on and then talk about the rest of the list. Yeah, go, go ahead, Tim, go on. Um, and I was just eyeballing this because I haven't done the, um, the thorough analysis, but it would seem to me that we've got to reconcile the table that Adrian's put together with the fee proposal that Phil Jones has put together. And anything that Phil Jones have costed, if we're gonna commission this, then what that means, doesn't it, is that it should be green on Adrian's chart. And so I've just been going through the two documents, trying to reconcile them and if we go through the um, Phil Jones document um, where he's got the costing, so I'm on the uh, 
is at the last page where the, the table of costings on the Phil Jones document. Um, and I'm just finishing doing it now. Okay, lower road. Okay, so the Bising Road Gateway, where is that in your table, Adrian? Um, it's green, item five. Um, the Mal A2 junction, which I've raised my concerns about, is green, item six. So there's a consistency. Um, and I'm going to ask the question the other way, which is, is there anything green on your table that hasn't been picked up by Phil Jones? And if not, why not? The Crosstown walking route, which is the next item, is green, item 10 on Adrian's table. Then the healthy streets, low traffic neighborhoods, they've costed to do one. Adrian's listed four, but they are orange on uh, Adrian's table. And therefore either we say to Phil, no, they're not a priority, or we reconsider the priorities in Adrian's table, if you follow my logic. And that's a discussion that we could have next. Um, then we go to crossing improvements where he's listed designing four of them and they are covered variously between items 13 to 16, variously green or orange. And the Mal Forbes road crossing is, for example, orange in Adrian's uh, table. We either say we agree it's orange and therefore Phil Jones, we don't want you to do any work on it right now. Um, or we make it green and we get Phil Jones uh, moving ahead with that. My view would, we, would certainly be to make it green and to prioritize it over the crossing at the A2, just to put my card on the table. And then finally, the lower road enhancements along the, the length of lower road, I would assume, um, those are covered in Adrian's table. Are they under other item 21, if not anywhere else on the table, Adrian? And they're green, so that's consistent. Then we carry on with Adrian's table and we say, but there are other areas. Bramble Hill Road, okay, we've got a costing for that, but you know, with the caveat of what I've just said about Anderson's maybe paying for that. Um, have we got all road in green and so on and so on. And maybe rather than me try to do this now late in the day, this is an exercise that should be done uh, to properly uh, reconcile these two tables. Thank you. Yeah, I can do that. I, I think it's a good idea. Has anyone else got anything they want to come in on? But did you, I mean, did you follow my lot? Do you follow my logic in? in oh, in yes, I, I, I think it's just a matter of um, tidying up the table that Adrian produced, but uh, he's done this very last minute because a lot of this has gone up to the wire. So we've been working on this um, all, all, all week. So it's, it's quite easy to um, tidy the bits up you've just um, just highlighted. Absolutely. And if I may, just one last thing. If, um, if there's anything still left in green, I mean, I, I would make Forbes Road green. Yeah, you know, I, I think I've said that enough. I'm going to wear the T-shirt tomorrow if you see me in town. Um, but, but if there's anything left that's green, that's not covered in the Phil Jones proposal, can you see whether you can cover it by taking 5K out of the Anderson's bit and deploying it to Phil Jones if you think you could get Anderson's to cover the 5K for that part of town? What I would say at, at, the, at the moment is, with regard to Anderson's, I, I'll take I take up what you say, and I think that's sensible because we don't we can go back to Phil Jones at any time and ask him to start moving on something if we decide that's the next thing we want to do. Um, so we don't have to uh, make our mind up on everything um, today. Um, I guess one of the things I, I would like to get the ball rolling on is the uh, centre line. Yeah, come in, Julian. Um, it was because, uh, I mean, in a way, this discussion is about what, what, which of these we're going to pay for out of this year's budget. Oh, lost you, Julian. Julian. 
things that were in the original. Oh, he's breaking up. Um, and you keep coming and going. And also, can you, um, really my, can you hear me? Sorry. We, we lost about the last minute, Julian. You, you, if you could start again, that'd be fantastic. Try switching off your camera, see if that helps your picture signal. Oh, your, your sound signal. Is everyone, uh, was I in the middle of speaking? Everything went? Yeah, we lost you, Julian. I'm lost okay. again. Right. Um, so, I, yeah, I, what I was saying was that um, part the the idea of this item was partly to, to finalise what we were Chair is breaking up again. Uh, if you repeat the suggestion to turn his video off. Stuff that uh, was in the original Phil um, Jones proposal. Mm. Uh, sorry, have I gone again? I was going to say, switch your camera off for a while. Yeah, OK. You might want to ask someone else to speak, uh, Eddie, while I'm... OK, I'll, I'll bring in Chris for the moment, Chris Barker. Thank you. Thank you, Chair. Um, the only other thing I sort of wouldn't mind adding to this and sorry to get back to sort of governance and costing things so I mean I was I, I, I was hoping we kind of had the money to do all of the work that, that, that Phil Jones Associates had, had outlined and that we could get pricing for all of it the other thing I think that would help augment this table is um, where we have costings and where we get the costings for each piece of work that's done, a, a kind of estimated price that would be useful. Um, and then I think time time frames. There's two time frames that appear to be missing. When I read the Phil Jane Phil, Phil Jones Associates document, it, it, it wasn't clear to me whether the times he suggested against each of the each of the design and costs could be done concurrently or in, in series. And, and I'm not clear as a consequence whether we want to prioritize that list and then ultimately get on with some work within that, or we want it all to be done to understand a full bill of materials or as close as we can before we make any decisions on delivery. But it feels to me that there's a, there's a time frame element of this missing and potentially prioritization. And, and perhaps we've got that here because we've got the kind of phase twos and, and that's what you were aiming for at the beginning. But um, yeah, yeah. We, we, we can most certainly um, uh, highlight to, to John which um, ones we would like him to work on first. Um, Adrian's just uh, uh, he's got a table, he's put together a bit more information for us. So what I've tried to do here is I've just tried to follow exactly what Tim was saying and just try and reconcile the items back to, to Phil's uh, schedule. Um, the only ones where, which I haven't got included here are the Bramble Hill, Reedham Road, Orr Road, uh, Barnfield Road um, suggestions. I think everything else is included. I've included £500 per crossing for the moment. Um, I haven't included the Mal Forbes Road one. I haven't included the Stonebridge Way, Davington, but I, but I could add those in as well if, if, if needed. And to uh, Chris's point, I mean, in some cases, uh, so for example, the centerline removal, I think that the, the, the proposal is that, that we've got um, uh, we've got money to, I think that the money's in the budget to uh, pay for Phil Jones's fees regarding that and also to actually do the centerline removal. Um, in the other cases, the, the, the idea of this is to, to, to get to a stage where we have got a bit of quantities. And at that point, we can then, if, you know, if the money is there, we, then, we will then need to prioritise which, which of these can go ahead. So, so, I, so I get that. And sorry to just come back, Chair. Um, it, it, it's more that let's just say the central removal makes sense right it's low cost it's high impact 
we've got the money in the budget we just want to do it that feels like number one priority that's great yeah. and then we've got a list of five or six other things that are outstanding with Bill Jones each of which are going to take three weeks four weeks to get a design or two weeks for those next series of things do we wait until the end of that series which might be in collection four months before we make decisions or are there a couple of those that we can say they go first they're higher impact the higher probability that it's going to be a lower cost we'll get the budget for them i'm just wondering about when we're going to make the next set of decisions are we going to wait until the end of that process or as we go through i would suggest that the drawings wouldn't take that long to produce so, because i think in many cases we've already got outline drawings it, it's just Chris of doing a bit of detail. I, I, I doubt it would be four months. I, mean, I would have thought it would be, you know, two, three, two, three, four weeks. Is that well, what John, Eddie? You know, John, John got back to me and said uh, a fair number of them he can run concurrently and work on them at the same time. Okay. Yeah, I guess his team that he's got. Uh, when I, I look at the time scales, you know, they all look at like two, three, eight weeks. And if you add them all together, that's quite a long time. Uh, it, it, it won't be in series, no. Currently, then that's, then that's great. It will be short, much shorter than that. Julian, have we have we got you back now? Uh, yes, but not not necessarily stably. Sorry, the discussion's kind of moved moved on now. I'm. Well, I think what I was saying was that the um, those things that were in the original design. and those things that the, the public would wreck with compliance. Um, I mean, the only other point I, I will quickly make is in terms of timetabling, of course, the other factor is I, 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 I'm going to come in in a minute, but I'll go in. Um, oh, sorry. Some of these things I'm done, but not worth doing much more until we know that uh, we're definitely uh, running on with the scheme. OK, Tim, you don't want to come back in. Thanks, Eddie. Um, yeah, I just want, want to say I, I've been doing what Adrian's been doing there. Um, let, let's do this properly and get these numbers right. But I, I calculate there's £20,500 worth of fees in the Phil Jones Associates uh, fee proposal, the five of which relate to the, let's call it the Andersons work for simplicity. There's then £15,500 work of others which more or less covers off everything in um, Adrian's prioritized list. And it also includes some items which are orange in Adrian's list. Um, the question that leaves me with bearing in mind, I think Chris's point, which I fully support, which is let's get on and do something quickly and the road center lines um, are the place to start. Um, the question I have is twofold. One, to Phil Jones Associates to say how much will the uh, centerline removal cost? You know, are we talking about another 20 or are we talking about five or are we talking about 100? I, I don't know. Uh, and secondly, how much money? How much? Sorry to interrupt. Uh, five. Um, they, they costed the removal of, what was it, about 150 meters of white lining would cost about five thousand for the whole of the town no 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 yeah, it's, um, no it's, it's not the whole of the town but it's it's 150 meters of white line removing which if it's, if it's a dashed line you know looks like more like 400 meters or something if, if you see what I mean so it, it's it, it, it's not everything um it, what John was going to do was to prior to sort of list list down which we thought were the priority roads. Okay. So, for example, Bisingwood Road, don't bother because it's going to be resurfaced anyway. That's understood. Sort of understood. But if it's only five thousand, we might want to say what what does twenty five thousand give us? We yes, might have exactly. an economy of scale, which um, a contractor can actually then cover not just five times. Uh, whatever it would be, you know, two kilometres, we might get four or five kilometres. What length in kilometres or metres are we actually dealing with? And then we know what we're going to draw, be able to draw down against. 
Um, I think a really early conversation with Phil Jones on that one subject will be very helpful. The second question it raises is how much money does the town council have in its budget? Uh, and, you know, is 25,000 too much or it, will there still be more? In which case, let's commission Phil Jones to design more uh, and then see what the costings are. We might do this incrementally. I think a constructive conversation with Phil Jones Associates would be my immediate next step, but, but informed by what budget is available for one, professional fees to the capital costs of undertaking the works. And then it'll be a balancing act between the two. So I'm going to propose that certain parts of Phil Jones's proposal we accept because as part of his proposal, he will give us uh, the cost estimates for, um, uh, for this, because his quotes are for the concept design and the cost estimates. So. I would say ask him to go ahead with the white line removal one, which he's costed at two and a half thousand for him to draw up, to go ahead with his concept design and cost estimate for the Bisingwood Road Gateway, uh, to go ahead with his concept design for improving the, the Mal Gateway, which could, could include that crossing closer to the A2 if he thinks it's safe, to go ahead with drawing more detail into the crosstown walking route um, to go ahead with the four drawings for the crossings and to go ahead with lower road but not to go ahead with the low traffic neighborhood or the priory road part of his uh, quote did you want to come back in on that tim yes I've, le I've left my hand up no i didn't other than i think that's a very very sensible suggestion now that i've got the mic I'd like to second that then. If we, if you've proposed it, Eddie, I'm happy to second. Chris, do you want to come in, Chris? Uh, I, I agree with that, but I'm not uh, permitted to vote, not being a councillor. Great. Okay. Well, I know. I think that's what Julian was trying to tell us before he lost contact. <laughs> I reckon that's a total of ten thousand five hundred, which you've just spent. So we can afford that we have got money in the budget some of it will because yeah some of it's from reserve but most of it will be the uh, uh what is left from this year's budget i don't think we'll have to take much from uh from reserves okay if everyone's agreed on that that's what i will do get back to, uh, to john mcqueen and tell him we'd like to go ahead with those items and the other bits we will come back to at a, at a later date um if, oh yes, Chris. Um, yes, I, I, I agree with all that. Um, I, I've got a question just to clarify on the Bisingwood Road detailed design for gateway gateway near pedestrian refuge. Which refuge you, are we talking about? The uh, one down by Wildish Road. Yes, that's the one, Chris. Crossing to um, the West Faversham Community Centre. Yes, that's it. Yeah, you've got it. Yeah, not the one right down on the Western Link Junction. No, no, no. And not the um, Puffin Crossing to Sainsbury's. No, no, no. I've got it. Thank you. I mean, we, 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 myself and Adrian went through it quite thoroughly with yeah. uh, John McQueen and um, Adrian uh, and um, uh, Jamie Watson. Yeah. And I just mentioned that, of course, the Bisingwood planters have been adjusted a while ago now. It seems to be much better, in my opinion. Yes, and a lot uh, part of our, our choices of what we wanted Bill to uh, or John to design up were to demonstrate to the, the public who've been feeding back through Commonplace that we're listening to them. We wanted to show that we have been taking on board their suggestions and, and a number of um, like Lower Road, this what we're talking about here, Bisingwood Road Gateway. It was trying to sort of demonstrate that we are moving forward based on feedback that we're getting. Hence why we've chosen a lot of um, the items I just I just ran through. Okay, uh, Adrian, did you want to say anything at the moment? Yes, uh, just two things. Just on the Bisingwood Road Junction, um, we, we have we have included um, some thoughts about whether that junction can be tightened up or not. 
Uh, I mean, then we just asked John to, to put his thoughts together on that as to whether there's any, any scope for that. Um, and Eddie, before you say uh, yes to Phil Jones uh, on the fees, I'll just double check my arithmetic. I think it's okay, but, I, but I, I've just done it in a hurry here. So there's always a possibility of something going, going wrong. I'll wait for you to get back to me tomorrow, Adrian. <laughs> okay, um, where are we now? That's pretty much it, except for matters to report. Uh, I sent out information on Vivacity cameras for those of you who haven't seen it before. Um, I hope that was useful uh, information. Um, there is a, a new article going at, sorry. Uh, yes, yeah. just very briefly, my butt in there. I've been sending photos as and when I snaps on WhatsApp, um, public spaces group walkabout um, page, um, as I see the cameras as they move around to different positions. This afternoon I took one, but I haven't forwarded it yet. Um, Whistable Road, it's right opposite the junction with Bob A. Moore Close. So they're moving around. Yeah, interesting. Go ahead, Tim. Thanks, Eddie. Um, the, this data will no doubt be really, really valuable. Uh, I just want to remind those who remember and inform those who weren't there at the time that we, when we initially undertook speed surveys um, several years ago, the data that came through were super helpful in convincing us that the town was already ready for 20s plenty without significant phys physical intervention. That work was was done by some of my colleagues in my company and by Phil Jones in his company. Um, at, at KCC may well have, will no doubt, let me say, have improved uh, through Jamie. But at the time, their analysis was below the, the standard that you would normally expect. They came in with felt tips, do you remember, Chris? And it was just so disappointing. Um, really just a, a plea that 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 data is shared and, mm. and that all of us, I think, would like to get our hands on it. And that although, you know, J Jamie will be able to look at it competently, no doubt, I think it would be good to have many eyes on it because it's often nuanced. We need to be careful about averaging across the whole of the day. We need to focus on certain time periods more than others. And I think that's probably a story that most of us here are familiar with. Um, so would love to see that as it comes through. Thank you. Yeah, um, Adrian myself and Julian uh, have got a meeting with KCC on Tuesday so we'll ask again if they've got their first reports through and uh, ask if we can have a copy. Did you want to come back in again Adrian? Uh, yeah I was just going to say on the, on the cameras, uh, on the camera data Tim, uh, absolutely uh, they're not very good at looking at the, that sort of data, they just take broad averages and they're, they, they, haven't, they don't understand spreads and so on. I was trying to be kind. <laughs> Sorry, um, uh, and and we have asked not for the report. We have asked for the underlying data. So I, I hope we um, I, I hope we get that. Chris, you said the cameras are moving round. I, I I I hope not. I hope they're all fixed in the in the one position. That's what we. There are, there are the um, commando points on the street lamps and the one that was on South Road then switched over after a few days, switched to uh, somewhere. Uh, I noticed uh, two or three days ago, the one at the bottom of Dark Hill. I haven't yet gone out to check on near Sainsbury's and I spotted this afternoon, um, there's a camera up, whether it's one camera or whether they've got three floating around, but they are switching as in the, as in the report. Oh, I, I, I was told that there were six. Six locations? Yes. I don't know how many actual cameras. There are six cameras and six locations, and they are fixed. They are supposed to be fixed in one place. Oh, sorry, in six places. I'll do a survey tomorrow. Okay. This, have you, you've got this map, have you, Chris? Yes. Thank this, you. This, this is where they should be. I'll send this through to you. I've got that. Thank you very much. You've got it already. Okay. Yeah. Okay, folks. Uh, uh, one last bit of information for you is um, following feedback that Adrian passed on to me from Commonplace. 
uh, a gentleman was highlighting that taxis were driving in excess of 20 miles an hour around town. I spoke with the licensing team at Swale and they added a section on the tax, uh, taxi newsletter to remind the drivers that they had to stick to 20 miles an hour. And if they didn't, they would get uh, points on their license. Um, so those sorts of things are making a difference, thank goodness. Okay, I am gonna wrap the meeting up unless anyone else wants to add anything or bring something in. Uh, Julian, go ahead. Yeah, just very briefly, Eddie, to remind you, there's still four weeks of the consultation uh, left. I mean, it's been very frustrating. We haven't been able to uh, do much uh, uh, promotion and campaigning uh, to encourage people to take part. But um, we do have a couple, we have a couple of events coming up. We're doing a um, webinar for the Faversham Society, and we're also doing a webinar for Labour Party uh, members. So we've been trying to focus on potential um, supporters. Um, and we're also going to be emailing quite regularly to uh, people we know as uh, supporters in the next uh, few weeks. All, all kind of saying, you know, get your, your neighbours, your friends, your relatives um, to uh, support the uh, uh, consultation. So if everyone else can do the same, that would be really great. Thank you. OK, uh, thank you all very much. And uh, I'll close the meeting. Good night. Thank you. Thank you. Good night. Thanks, Eddie. Good night, everyone. Cheers, everyone.